Hello everyone, this is John Specko, and I'm here today with uh, a couple other people. Josh, you know Josh, Sharp XE, you know, his standard tag name and everything. But we got a couple other things, and uh, you know, myself and also Josh, we're still in school, so we've got this ethics class that we have to do a project, and this is pretty much our project. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be discussing, you know, ethics and how they come into play as far as multiplayer online games. And uh, we have a couple of guests that are also, you know, a couple of guildies, pretty much, and made pretty good friends with them. Uh, so go ahead and introduce yourself, Ben. Well, uh, I'm Ben. I'm uh, I'm um, 31 years old. I am a an attorney. Graduated from law school back in 08. Uh, I currently work in the business world uh, when I have to, uh, doing re uh, retail property development. And uh, I like to. Uh, I met these guys playing. Um, Star Wars Old Republic, and uh, it's been it's been a pleasure playing with them, and I'm happy to help them out here. All righty, awesome. How about you, uh, Carl? Uh, hi, yeah, my name's Carl. Uh, I am also 31 years old. Uh, I've been uh, good friends with Ben uh, going back all the way to college. Uh, I am a MD, uh, finished a residency in internal medicine this last year, uh, intensely dissatisfied with my career, and I'm currently trying to go back to law school. Nice. And uh, Josh, just so everybody, you know, since this is going to be up on my YouTube channel, just do a quick, hey, this is me again. Hey, everybody. It's Josh or SharpXZ again. You know, you know me just from, I play with Speco all the time, pretty much with every game we play. So it's just uh, joining you guys again. Awesome. So, yeah, the whole discussion as far as this goes, you know, this has been, this is for an ethics class. So, you yeah. Pretty much, we decided if we're going to do a project, it's going to be about something we're actually interested in, and uh, came up with the idea of you know discussing the online subculture and how the ethics have kind of uh, evolved around the subculture of online gaming, and even more granular would be uh, multiplayer, uh, massive multiplayer online games. So MMOs like, for example, WoW, Rift, and this game that you see in right here, uh, Star Wars: The Old Republic. So there, there's a couple things that I've noticed, you know, that that there is a set of uh, kind of, you know, unspoken of ethics, sort of things like it's not acceptable to really be that jerk, you know, it's not. And in the in this in this world, you know, even with other multiplayer games, there's something called trolls. And uh, even though some people say, oh, they're needed and they're okay, they're really not. So. Uh, what are your guys' thoughts on where these certain people come from? Basically, just jerks that are seeming. Uh, some people think it's okay to exploit the anonymity of being in an online game and having to be behind a microphone. Well, I guess I'll go ahead and start. Um, personally, uh, coming back, I think people realize that just having that the anonymous feeling and being able to just throw all your, you know, your personal morals and ethics out the window and being able to break them it causes people to actually be that jerk or be that troll and i guess it maybe just gives them a sense of satisfaction since they can't do it in the real world because it doesn't really have any kind of personal repercussions as far as the real world real world goes well that's interesting but i, w I would say that some of these uh trolls that uh, clearly don't abide by any general set of rules or ethics that we would generally think was acceptable. I mean, these may be the same antisocial people that are freaking a-holes in the real world, too. And while I agree that the um, that there's a much lower threshold because of the anonymity that uh, online games give you to break what society holds as a general... Uh, generally accepted social mores that there are still people some of these people are the same jackasses that are spray painting buildings and vandalizing cars in the real world I totally agree with that statement but you know how many of those actually have the money to go out and play online games if they're you know constantly being in trouble with the law but I mean you know yeah I uh, I agree with with both those comments. I think that um, first of all, as a basic presumption, we can we can say well, obviously whoever we're talking about here can afford to play online games and be involved in this stuff. But 
I think as a general uh, as a general cross section of society, you're going to get the same percentages of people who are jackasses and the same percentage of people who are going to be trolls no matter what. You know, as you as you do in real life. Now, the threshold is is somewhat lower because of the anonymity that that these games provide. Um, but I actually think that when you're when you're in a community playing a you know a video game together with other people that requires time and and you know significant um, commitment to to really to really get the the full benefit out of it. Um, I think that you actually see a higher or, or a lower percentage of people being trolls like that than you do in other areas where we have anonymity like for example look at the look at the posts you see at the end of any news article online i mean that is completely full of 99% of people being essentially trolls because there's there's zero uh, commitment to it and yet there's a ton of uh, complete anonymity whereas in this you know, in a game like this, um, it's a little bit less, I think, or a lot less in a lot of ways, um, uh, full of, of those people and much more concerned with the kind of ethics you guys are talking about. Well, and it comes to the, the fact that it is a persistent world and there is something to a persistence of your reputation in the gaming world as opposed to, you know, just some random throwaway Reddit account or, you know, some random post at the end of a news article where truly once you finish typing that sentence and hit enter, you know, that person ceases to exist. Because there is a persistence of your reputation, you know, there are some consequences to your action. Significantly lower, obviously, than in the real world, but people remember when you're an ass. Yep. And I think the other the other important factor is that most people play, you know, I know all of us do, but most people play these online games because we're looking to, to enjoy ourselves. I mean, the whole point is to have fun. And I think a lot of us find much more, uh, we find fun much more readily when we deal with other people like human beings as opposed to like, you know, anonymous, um, you know, digital uh, avatars that we're never going to actually have to interact with. Now, what would you say to, I've heard the argument before that people are naturally, um, for lack of a better word, and also using in kind of a quote, uh, na people are naturally evil. Okay. You've heard that before, you know, even going into, you know, the, uh, the deity approach to ethics and where they come from, you know, be that from a religious standpoint or any, any kind of, you know, branch from that, that people are naturally that way. Uh, would you would you agree with that, or would you be opposed to that in saying that if people are giving the ch given the chance in a, in a setting like this to where they have that anonymity, to where they can do things that they wouldn't normally do? Do you think a a person that acts out their life in a completely ethical way uh, would it would be that much easier for them to reverse that in this setting? Well, it's certainly easier for them to do so, and I think the fact that it is so easy um, and that not everyone does it kind of points to the fact that um, while human beings, by our nature, whether you want to talk, I mean, not that this encompasses whether it's a divinely inspired nature or it's just a, a you know, a totally natural human nature, but whatever it is, there's something more than simply looking out for ourselves um, and, and doing the thing that's easy or that has the least repercussions because even in these games I've, I've seen enough people take you know spend actual time trying to do quote unquote the right thing that uh, there's something it seems to me rewarding in and of itself and as I said rewarding in this sense I mean like it makes it more fun for us to do which is the real reason we're all we're all here playing yeah and also another thing we kind of touched on before, uh, not not in this talk, but things we've talked about before. You, you know, I, I mentioned the you know the unspoken ethics. However, there 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 is one thing that's really prevalent, and almost you you can't go without seeing in MMOs with massive multiplayer online games is uh, the structure of of how guilds work. You know, and there is basically there's there's three general categories of. Uh, of guilds there's you know pve guilds where they go and they kill stuff pvp guilds where uh they go and they go fight other people online and then you have the hardcore guilds now there's certain things that 
it, they, they run more like a business in how they do, do things. Basically, they want to be world first to beat a certain boss or whatever like that. And there are certain approaches to how they set up their code of ethics to where it, it fits that. And uh, certain things like someone may really want to come along to play, yet you don't let them come along simply because it's better for the guild as a group that they don't. Now, that, that's kind of a utilitarian approach of, of going about it. However, it, it isn't accepted well unless it's thrown out there, like you said before, Carl, that you know, this is how we do things. And that's kind of the way that you know, ethics in themselves, even micro, uh, in a micro uh, kind of uh, subculture, and that even though it is a video game and it's just pretty or unorganized and, they're, and it's just people playing with each other uh, over the internet, uh, things like that do come up. And it's pretty cool that it does, it gets to that point. However, um, it's kind of funny how sometimes people can actually bypass, you know, a set of ethics depending on their skill set. And that's something that I've noticed. Yeah, and the very interesting thing about this too is um, just like you, we kind of, obviously you don't have to abide by the same set of uh, ethical rules that are the framework for which our real life society is. People don't necessarily expect um, some of the same expectations in a game because it is a game after all. But the same people that complain about getting left behind in a raid because perhaps they're not as skilled or not as geared, um, they don't walk into the vice president of their company's work in real life and say, "Hey, why can't you know? Why aren't I being promoted to this higher position? You know, I should get to try this too." The the game environment somehow changes people's expectations of what's allowed even though we are programmed as social beings to understand that natural hierarchies arise in society for a reason but for whatever reason a lot of people have a hard time transitioning that to the video game environment unless it's kind of put out there up front that you know this is a um, meritocracy you know by being a better player, by being better geared, you earn rights. Rights are not given to you immediately just for sh by showing up. Yeah. And, you know, as much as we often desire to have a, a guild set up, for example, that is strictly on merit or on, a, you know, um, ability or, or just, you know, the, the, the eight guys or however many it is that are going to get the job done, I think more often than not, in, in almost every case, you're going to find yourself, we always find ourselves with one or two guys that maybe aren't actually as good, but we really like for some other intangible reason. They're funny, they're... They try hard, you know, whatever it is. Or they just show up. You mean just time. like in real life? Yeah, that's what, that's yeah. what I'm saying. It, <laughs> it really mirrors exactly like real, real life, life in yeah. that way. Yeah, it's it's kind of like, you know, the, you know, talking about real life, and you bring in, like, myself and Josh and you and uh, Ben and Carl, the, the, the real life friend kind of thing, to where, you, you know, it may not be, you know, the fairest thing to do however we're going to bring uh, us four along for everything regardless of how good somebody else is or how qualified they are to do their spot as far as contributing to the team and that's because we work well together and it's just like we, we were brought up the um, the 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 dilemma of you know you have uh how so many people get jobs because they're a friend of a, a friend of somebody that works there, you know, is that, is that ethically sound, you know? Well, to me, you know, you think about certain things like, like your friend that you've known for a while, you know, that person well enough to know whether or not they're going to show up on time, whether or not they're going to do stuff and whether or not they're going to lie to you about, Oh, I, I didn't get this done because of blah, 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 blah. But, you have somebody else's out there that you know their qualifications. However, there's certain things that you don't know about them like that. So you're you're kind of instead of going on their word, you're also with a friend. You're going on your word. And also, not only there are things that you know about them, there are things that they know about you. And there is something to be said for the synergy between people 
that know how each other play. And so even if maybe statistically, numerically, they don't look quite as good on paper, the fact that you know that this small group functions well together, um, just like in real life, it sometimes trumps uh, the actual numbers. And it makes it, in my opinion at least, perfectly ethically sound to, to bring someone in that you know that you work well to get together with, that you know you can get the job done with, uh, over someone that maybe on paper looks better. Yeah. For an example, uh, uh, this is a real example. I, I work for HCA Hospitals. I'm a SQL DBA. Um, and I started off there as a long-term, full-time intern. It was the only position at the company like it. Basically, they needed something done, and they wanted to bring in somebody that wasn't a summer intern that could actually do the write and code and everything. And that turned into a full, full-time physician for me. Um, and once my position opened up, before it even opened up, when I knew I was going to move out of it, I highly recommended Josh for it because he's a programmer just like me and everything. I knew he could do the job well. Uh, I know I've got uh, a couple of ill remarks about that, me immediately recommending him rather than anybody else. And it's because it, it's that situation. And I really don't, as you know, as a corporation and how big HCA is, that they knew that's what was happening, yet they, they encourage it. They encourage you to bring friends to... Uh, into the work environment simply because they go for the uh you know the cohesiveness of a workforce you know where it's not all you know the the fake corporate feel so i can see where you could say that it's not fair ethically unsound and that it's in some respects although you get you have to remember that the whole field of ethics is is theory other than you know you have your your universal truths yet sometimes those can e- those can even be debated well i you know at the end of the day i think that that ethics if we're talking about ethics um we're talking about a, a you know some kind of recognizable uh system that that most people that everyone can at least uh understand uh, of what is uh, right and wrong, what is acceptable, what is not, those kind of uh, standards upon which we base you know, all of our society. And whether that society is society at large where, I, you know, where we work or whether it's in a video game, I think that... Um, but well, what I was going to say is I don't think that either of those examples you just gave really necessarily would violate anybody's ethics, right? Because believe it or not, I mean, like it or not, we don't live in a utilitarian, strictly utilitarian world. Correct. We live in a world that goes way beyond that, um, and I mean, I, I actually think that's for the better. But you know, it's mo- it's uh, and if we did, then you'd be right. They'd be violations of, of our ethical code because you know to recommend somebody just because we liked them, you know, wouldn't be wouldn't be a very good reason. Um, even leaving aside what Carl pointed out, where sometimes you do you will work better with somebody that you know that you like and all that. But I mean, really, if it was strictly utilitarian, it would just be this guy can get the job done faster and better. Uh, or not, you know, but that's not the world in which we live and and the cool thing I think about online video games the reasons I find them so compelling and interesting uh, is that they do in a, in a very real way mirror the real world so you do we do end up with these same considerations um, for things beyond strict utilitarianism this guy's fun I like this guy I, you know or I really admire the fact that this guy works his butt off even though he doesn't actually perform quite as well as somebody else yeah, it's like in an old in an old group that we ran with a few years ago. We had a, a member that she, she was just horrible, just an absolutely horrible player, and we had to carry her and baby ba- basically babysit her through while we played to and walk her through exactly how to play. However, she did more for the team than anybody outside of whenever we were running scheduled events. She would go do all the stuff that nobody else wanted to do as far as, you know, uh, farming up mats and everything like that to, to make things for the group. And, uh, and as a result of that, you know, we tolerated it for a really, really long time, yeah, you know, much more than I think we would have had she not because there was another person in the group that was just as bad, yet he didn't contribute in any way. Therefore, he was gone in a couple weeks. And he was a really nice guy, yet just being a nice guy doesn't always cut it. And it, even with, you know, a work environment, you know, we 
we've had at work we've had some layoffs of people that um that yeah they were really nice people yet they really didn't do much of a job and that's kind of where it comes out to and i i don't see that as as wrong in any way maybe unfortunate however uh ethically yeah like i said i, I keep saying it over and over again ethically sound well and i think one of the, you pointed out a very important distinction there you know are we judging this person on this one narrow characteristic or their overall contribution to the society that we built in this game? Because yep. as you said, this she wasn't that great running raids, but she contributed. She contributed to the society enough in a way that made her still a worthwhile member. So I think you're on very solid ethical grounds that you know she was a useful member of your team because you know, we're looking here at a much wider picture than one narrow area of performance. So it kind of comes off as a little bit of a balancing act. In a way, because it seems like there's really no perfect, you know, this is how it is. That's how it is with pretty much all moral standards or ethics. I mean, it, it's all personal when it actually comes down to it, it's all pretty much what you believe is right and wrong. Well, I think the, to point out that it's a balancing act is is very, very true. And you look at, I mean, look at any any guild advertisement in any game that's ever existed. And one of the first things people say is, oh, this is a no drama guild, right? And that's because the whole this whole concept of drama is a very real issue. And it's it's just as real, in fact, even a little more real in, in you know online gaming than it is in real life. But it's always there. I mean, you take any group of people, you take 10 or 15 human beings, put them together in any situation, there's going to be drama. Because that's, that's who, what human beings are. It's you have people that, are, that don't always get along for various reasons and who don't always see eye to eye on particular definitions of, of uh, you know, ethics and what's right and wrong and how somebody should or shouldn't be treated. Um, we might all generally agree, but even, you know, even amongst the four of us, I'm sure we could come up with some things where we could look at the same situation and come to, come to slightly different conclusions. Yeah. It kind of comes back to, uh, you know, how to be treated, you know, it seems like a lot of the way that it goes is, you know, we have the golden rule and, uh, it seems to be applied almost everywhere. Um, although like it, like I said, this is a gaming community. So it doesn't always work that way uh, because you have, you know, the outside world uh, that may take away from it. Kind of like Carl here gives gives the guild millions and millions and millions of credits, yet uh, Josh here gives none. Yes. <laughs> and that, but but that doesn't hold anything against Josh. It's just because you know Josh doesn't doesn't spend the time to do credits. Yet Josh always shows up for for ops you know even if it is a couple minutes late because he got a new computer and can't figure <laughs> out the sound card but i don't see it in any different light so there are certain things like we have it set up we have our own guild rules and some of the guild rules are are basically fleshed out the golden rule you know and a couple of things that were kind of added along the way is where if somebody says something to offend you or something like that you know kind of shrug it off you know people are going to say things and that you take the wrong way but other than that i mean all pretty laid out there um besides and i don't really have much else about it oh my well, and not just laid out there but laid out there up front that people are aware of that you're setting the framework ahead of time to so that they can build their expectations around that framework because that's just like in society in real life you're brought up you know that there are laws that's the framework that we as a society have agreed to live by and that kind of sets um the expectations you have as an individual living in society the same thing happens in the online games and online guilds yeah and, and i'll go ahead josh i was gonna say going back to i guess oh, just being just the people that you know that will follow your guild's expectations and rules, being them unwritten or not, um, going outside of their society and say somebody in another guild and them treating them completely differently 
like being a troll towards them rather than being nice like they are to all their guild mates. You know, just uh, you know, they'll fr they're friendly to people they know, but if it comes to somebody they don't know, they're complete assholes. And I think that comes back to a certain extent to the increased amount of anonymity you have when you're dealing with someone outside of your own social group, even inside of this persistent world. It's much easier and there are fewer consequences to yourself uh, to be an a-hole to someone that you don't interact with on a regular basis. And that's a big thing. Do you, do you think that mostly people, you know, abide by you know, most of our ethical principles as far as, you know, this uh, MMO kind of setting goes, or is it based off of, you know, reward or consequence? Uh, negative consequence, to be more specific. Well, I think you you get the whole cross section, frankly, and I, I I think that many people act like nice people because they are nice people, and it, whether it it's you know anonymous or not, they are just going to be nice guys and and kind of have a good time and help other people have a good time because that's makes it more fun for everybody. And then you know you got other people who won't. Um, I think that uh, like like you suggested, there is at least some degree of people that are that might act more politely in in real life where there's consequences and they don't in in a in a game like this because there aren't or really i mean at the end of the day there's no real consequences you might make yourself hated on a server but you've got to transfer servers and that's the end of the end of the story right so uh, some people would be that way but i think at the end of the day you know it's just human human nature is human nature some guys are jerks and some guys aren't yeah. and uh, going back to a previous point you know about the question of whether uh, humans are intrinsically evil. I, I think I would argue that humans are intrinsically flawed, but we are biologically at our base social creatures. You know, we're not all out there still running around solo, uh, you know, scavenging, um, you know, prey from each other. We are biologically driven to create societies. And because of that, we have within us a great drive to get along with people it doesn't always work and so obviously sometimes there are uh, you know personality conflicts particularly when you're dealing with people that haven't quite reached adulthood yet but at our base we are social creatures and we're always going to try to make a society work yeah, I mean, going back to what you just said, actually, a few sentences, a few <laughs> words ago about um, them being not really through adulthood yet. Um, most, I, I think it's safe to assume that most people that are trolls or assholes on in online games are those kind of people that aren't exactly of age that haven't really witnessed or have the experience of actually real world ethics as far as either the workforce or just you know in in entire in well in life and in entire in its entirety altogether not having the right moral or ethical experience that most of us have all today well or we can i guess make it even more general and say that generally people that don't work well in group settings in finding their way in society they have a incomplete personality whether that's due to the fact that they are still juveniles or they actually have some sort of personality disorder or some abnormal personality traits uh, you know those things obviously arise uh, in real life and are unpleasant to deal with in real life and of course you know a certain segment of certain section of those uh, people in real life are going to make their way into MMOs and they're going to act the same way you know there's another there's an interesting sort of uh, side fact that I just uh, sort of realized as you were talking there, Carl. And that is, you know, unlike the real world, so one of the major differences in, in, um, in these games is that in the real world we're judged fairly or unfairly by all kinds of other standards besides just our actions. I mean, we're, we're, we're mostly, and I think a lot of ways we are judged by our actions, of course. So when we treat somebody well, we, uh, we tend to get treated better in return. And when we don't, you know, the same. But you know, in the world, we're, we're judged by all kinds of other things as well. You know, what we look like. Um, you know, ugly guys aren't treated as well as handsome guys. And you sure as heck know that's true for the opposite sex as well. Um, and all kinds of other things as well besides just appearance. But in, in a game like this, 
the only uh, up until you get to know somebody and say talk to them uh talk to them over you know um voip or something the only way to judge anyone in this game is by their actions because you don't know anything else about them other than their actions. And I think maybe that is, is one of the reasons that ethics have become so important for, for people who take MMOs seriously. Is that at the end of the day, that's all you have. As opposed to you know, real life where you, there's a variety of other... I mean, a, a winning smile gets you nowhere in this game. Yeah, and another thing is about you know only being able to judge somebody by their actions. There's also people out there that will just... Just judge, just to judge you, you know, even if they don't even know you or haven't seen you in, you know, playing at all or don't have, don't, they do not have any actions to judge you off of. They just simply look down on you just because they automatically think they're the better, they're the better player until they see you. So, I mean, you have to look, I guess you can look at it like that as well. And I'll agree with you both that mostly we are judged by our actions in the game. There is one small correlation to, you know, the good-looking guy or, you know, the good-looking girl or the person with the big house or the great job. Gear. And uh, honestly, that's gear, gear, gear. Yep. And to a lesser extent for a while, level. Because let's admit, you, you might meet someone that's level 21 and they could be the greatest MMO player that's ever played the game. And 90% of the time, you don't give them a second look, uh, you know, if they're in chat because they're level 21 looking for a guild. Yeah. Yep, and uh, oh man, I lost track of what I was <laughs> track of what I was gonna say. Dang it! Well, I I just would like to point out there, Carl, that that uh, you're right in that respect. But I think that the the bigger point is that other than maybe not being having played the game as long, which that level equates to that, and and the quality of gear equates to that. But you know what? Quality of gear, uh, you know, is one thing. I mean, what do we look for when we look for players? I mean, we Clearly, a guy who is really well geared is great. He's gonna, he's definitely gonna go up in our estimation. But that's only the first step, right? So you're right in that it's not just about the a person's actions, um, but there are no other biases built into to a game like this. I mean, it's a truly, it's a truly true, gender true. and and uh, racial neutral world, and for that matter, education neutral for the most part, unless you, I mean, cannot put a sentence together. Um, but I mean, look, we play this game with people who hardly even speak the same language as us, which is which is pretty impressive, I think. Absolutely. One of the other interesting points that I would bring up about the gear issue, and it kind of being the you know kind of way that you judge someone's social strata within the game, though, is one of the things that I found interesting about uh, MMO societies would be what happened in World of Warcraft when they added the gear level issue. Because fundamentally, they thrust upon the entire community that played that game basically a new, you know, ethical framework that fundamentally, you know, this new gear level issue is right out there in your face, a number staring you, by which you're going to judge people. And it, I just found it somewhat interesting that kind of ad hoc, at you know, they just threw that in there at people. Um, and kind of fundamentally changed the way that a lot of the communities on all the servers worked. I'd be interested to hear John's uh, idea on what that did to communities and how that affected the ethics in the uh, WoW communities at the time. Well, it, w it went from the point to where, you know, it was partly based off of gear, yet not completely. It, you, you were focused on skill as well. And then it kind of morphed to the point to where that if you did not have a certain uh, level of gear, you had zero chance unless you were in a guild to do anything. Um, so, pretty, and this was, it got to the point to where people wanted you to be overgeared, to where they preferred someone that, that had a lot more to compensate for them sucking. And, and, it took away from the skill side of things and turned more things into a grind. So it, it kind of goes along the lines of, you know, not being able to, you know, be in, be in some club, you know, like a golf club or something, depending on how much your income is, not whether or not you can afford to get in or you can even play golf. Uh, that's how I would, I would compare it.
in ways, I, it, it made it to where you had a smoother experience if you were already there. That way you didn't have to worry about somebody, uh, you having to, to take up somebody else's slack. But it completely backfired in the way that it, it created a, uh, a very arrogant and know-it-all uh, community. Well, and the thing that I just found so disturbing by a lot of the changes that happened in that game is you had literally tens of thousands of these little microcultures that had grown up that had their well-established rules um, and expectations for people. And it, fun you know, Blizzard came in and fundamentally changed the rules on how everything worked and, you know, just changed the landscape of all these little uh, micro societies that had developed over the course of, you know, five, six years uh, with one fell swoop. And it's, it's unfortunate, however, it, it, it's one of those things to where people kind of overlook, you know, the big picture, like we were talking about before, not, not how it's, not really okay to focus on just one thing you know you can't you can't just it's not black and white it's it's a gray area with everything um and that's where people try to turn it into a black and white thing unless you have um four uh i can't remember the gear scores but unless you have you know item level 367 all and above you can't play and that's how these games are it's basically there's nothing to do uh, other than, you know, run stuff with other people. It's a multiplayer game. And that's the same way. And and even kind of straying off into, you know, the kind of Call of Duty culture that's formed, which is rampantly overrunning everything else. And the mindset uh, that everything, and the way, you know, people are respected um, or and can bypass certain things that are not okay uh, based off of gear level or achievements or stuff like that. In these games, you also have the people that can be complete and total douchebags because of they have a high kill-death ratio. Stuff like that. Um, and I do see it a lot worse in those in those other games. I think that's mainly because you know it's every man for himself for the most part. There really isn't as much of a need for being in a being in a guild or clan or you know anything like that in any other game other than an MMO from my experience uh, as far as being in a shooter or something like that a multiplayer game because you only need yourself to play and have fun or to just be slightly competitive however in this in this setting it, you're required to work with a group and you know groups are guided by ethics and you know, just playing by yourself in a shooter, you can go in there and scream at everybody and team kill your team kill everybody on the team, and there's really no consequence other than them team killing you back and you getting booted from the game, and you can just jump right back into another one. Unlike in these games, they incorporate penalties. You know, a lot of the, uh, a lot of ethics have also are built into the game, like leaving a war zone or a battleground in WoW, uh, just ninja leaving without and leaving everybody else to where a disadvantage as far as numbers goes you get a penalty to where you can't play again for say 30 minutes or an hour or so uh so i, I do think that you know even though you know we bring a lot of these these rules and guidelines that we go by into the games i think that a lot of them are also built in although in some games not as much as they should be that pretty much does it <laughs> <laughs> yep. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. We've been going on for a while. Uh, thanks for talking, guys. And uh, this has been our ethics project. Say laters. Laters. See ya. Bye bye. Say bye, Carl. Fine then. Screw you. Now he fell asleep. <laughs> <laughs> bye, Carl.